So once again, a blessed Easter to all of you. And as I've said, this is a uh, this eight days from uh, the uh, Sunday of the Resurrection until next Sunday is called the Octave of Easter. And it has the same rank. That's why you may have uh, noticed that we sing daily during these days the Gloria because it has the same rank, rank as Sunday as if it is a prolongation just as I think a, a, an image that uh, the church wants us to realize that the joy of the victory of Christ should be prolonged or shall we say this is already an image of the eternal joys which has no end so uh, this is the first thing that uh, uh, the Lord the church wants us to realize these days that uh, in the celebration of uh, the Easter mysteries the Lord wants us to and the church wants us to realize that indeed God is calling us to that fullness of joy as it can be it tries to celebrate in this earthly manner in liturgical and ritual manner now the idea of the joys that never end secondly historically these eight days called the uh, octave after I mean this uh, connected with Easter is related to the emerge rather with the uh, idea of helping the newly baptized to enter more deeply into the mystery of what they have received the baptism which in the olden times now it is being re uh, covered in other places the baptism of adults that after their baptism on Easter Vigil that they continue to to participate for eight days with their white garments now to celebrate the, this joy and to help them enter and appreciate more fully this uh, what they have received there is what they call the mystagogical catechesis. It is a, a uh, catechesis in which they try to go back and reflect what they have received, like that they were submerged into the water, the deeper meaning of that, of what they have done, like the renunciation of evil, etc. In order for them to to come and live and appreciate this gift from God so that would be some of the the things that uh, um, are related to the history of our celebrations during these days of octave now in the gospel you notice that uh, no one seems to have expected that Jesus would rise again. Walang nag-expect sa kanya na mabubuhay ulit. Like uh, Mary Magdalene and the other disciples, for example, the women, they were there not because they were expecting Jesus to be alive. They were there maybe to express uh, again their their love and in fact there is uh, a part of the uh, narrative where they these women were bringing this uh, uh, oil to anoint the body that, that was hurriedly buried the day before no so there is this experience of of these uh, 
disciples, close associates of Jesus, that they were not expecting Jesus to rise again. Also, they, they, one of the uh, proofs of, for this is that they did not recognize the risen Lord. No. Mary Magdalene considered, thought that he was, Jesus was a gardener. No. But when Jesus calls her name Miriam in Hebrew, there she recognized him. She made that joyful discovery that he was truly alive, present indeed. It is interesting to note that his closest friends recognized him as the recent Lord, as the Lord, no? Only gradually. Jesus, the risen Lord, is recognized in the context of their familiarity, of their friendship, of their previous relationship they had had with him. And this is a very important lesson, I think, for all of us, that uh, the challenge is to grow in our familiarity, friendship with Christ, with His ways, with His values, that we may be able to recognize Him and that He may become the joy of our hearts. And this is a lifelong task, a lifelong learning process, I think, for all of us. That we cannot claim, ah, I know Jesus already because I, I go to Mass or I pray once in a while or I read the Bible once in a while. We cannot claim. We know that our familiarity, our friendship with Jesus is a lifelong task. And I, rec I realized that after 28 years as a priest, and having studied theology, philosophy for, and that I, rec I barely, that I recognize how little that knowledge, that familiarity with Jesus, that I need to struggle to know Him more with the scriptures, no, with theology, with the teachings of the church, the insights, of uh, scholars no? to come to appreciate and love Jesus. So I think this is one, one of the lessons that we can learn today. No? Like as I've said, they recognize him because of the familiar, the familiarity, the familiar context they have had with him. And it is only, I think, that Jesus would become the joy, the true source of our joy, like Mary, who found the risen Lord when we have known him. And have been made familiar or made this friendship with him. We also notice that uh, in this, uh, the encounter with the risen Lord that uh, became the force, the impetus that pushed the disciples to go and share the good news. I have seen the Lord, he said. And it summarizes with this, it summarizes the good news. What is the good news? It is enclosed in this, in these words. I have seen the Lord, the risen Lord. No. The Lord who has won over sin and death. 
And they could not remain there like Mary Magdalene remained there at the tomb weeping. She could not remain there immobile, crying. When she saw the Lord and when she heard His voice calling her Mary, she went to announce to the disciples of Jesus, no, I have seen the Lord. Having ascended into heaven, Jesus needs witnesses and not only official witnesses but also testimonies of people, ordinary people that would be a source of strength for other people. The testimonies of Mary Magdalene, the disciples, would constitute the link to the tradition which is the foundation of Christian faith. It is because of their testimony of the Jesus' resurrection that this good news spread now. And it needs to be spread. Dear friends, as we uh, celebrate this uh, Easter season, we are also constituted as witnesses that we bring the good news that Jesus is indeed alive, especially in the way we live, in the way we conduct ourselves, in the values we, we hold and live. Believing in the risen Lord and living according to this necessarily leads us also to live that faith, that joy of faith in our everyday life. May this experience of the risen Lord push us also to proclaim the joy of the resurrection, especially in the way we live and relate with people. And may the risen Christ be our strength and joy. Amen.